When we think of antique media, it's easy to simply imagine vinyl records, preserved newspaper articles, and books written by people who've long since passed. But the idea of generational footprints left by those before us reaches into many other tangible aspects of life. For example, building components, architectural trends, linguistical alterations, border philosophies, and culinary achievements are some of the many examples of how generational footprints can provide us with valuable insight into the lives of those before us. Not just how they lived, but how we live today. Studying and understanding these glimpses of the past is one of the most important aspects of understanding any piece of history. Yet it's often overlooked. It's something we never consciously think about. We never stop at random points in our day to remind ourselves that every single person alive lives an entire life just as full and complicated as yours. It's just something we know, and it's left at that. Nothing has changed between humans today and humans 10,000 years ago. We have the same genes, the same traits, and most importantly, the same brains. But we rarely acknowledge they had the same patterns of thinking and core culture as we do today. This is because we don't understand that fact. The same way we acknowledge the autonomy of every other person on Earth, we don't truly understand or comprehend it. Have you ever gotten into an argument with someone and just wished they understood where you were coming from? or just really think things would be so much better if they thought about how you feel. That's where this comes from. You understand there are two different views of the situation, but you don't really grasp that in that moment, that person feels the exact same way, and that they are likely experiencing things in a manner parallel to how you are. As you're occupied with processing the frustration of feeling as if the other person won't see your perspective, you aren't actually stopping to imagine a perspective more beneficial to the other person. That goes both ways. And this is why most people are so absolutely certain they're correct, even if they're wrong, or they believe they would be able to solve a situation that arises much better than those currently entrusted or trained to do so. That's why some people scream at a waiter when their order is incorrect, and that's why it's often so difficult to admit we're wrong about something. We're psychologically inclined to trust ourselves more than others, and believe ourselves more than others, as well as to fight for ourselves more than we fight for anyone else. Shattering this cognitive bias, though, is a difficult yet necessary change that takes deliberate intent. When you take a more intimate look into antique media than you usually would on a regular basis, you come to some startling realizations that put many past misconceptions into a clearer, healthier, and more unbiased light. Viewing antique media helps us understand the extent of our own limitations, which in turn changes how we live with them. When I hear of local libraries holding cheap book sales, I always make a point to be there. It's incredible the hidden gems you find tucked away within the endless shelves and boxes full of books. One such find was a book titled The Embezzler. I got it because I liked the cover, and it seemed reasonably old enough to be a part of my antique book collection. But when I got home and read it, I was astounded. This book is a collection of autobiographies written by a big-time Wall Street embezzler by the name of Guy Prime and two figures close to his upbringing. From the first page alone, I understood this individual was at the front and center of one of the largest economic power shifts in United States history, shaping most of the worldwide financial culture we see today. Yet, I had never heard a single mention of his name, not so much as a passing thought. It seemed as if everyone had forgotten his very existence, despite being an unavoidable figure at his time. If it weren't for a handful of Wikipedia articles and the very book I held in my hand, I doubted any semblance of his name would be known by any future generations. This was the first of many revelations I had while reading this book, and acted as the catalyst to the journey I would soon find myself embarking on. As I said before, the idea that every generation knows things no one in any other time could know is something you're acutely aware of, but it's rarely something you actually understand in any meaningful capacity. Although I do not like to draw parallels between topics of interest and fleeting, time-dependent references, 
I feel the best way to encapsulate my feelings on this revelation is to ask viewers at the time of this video's publishing how they would feel if Jeff Bezos is completely forgotten by history in a hundred years. If in this time, Bill Gates is merely a fun fact sitting on the back of his shelf, and the everyday struggles we face are hardly even acknowledged by anyone in existence, would you feel forgotten? If the most prominent figures of our time, tied all too closely to politics that hold every aspect of our lives ransom, are reduced to simply an assumption that somebody probably made the first computer, and an understanding that, out of every company to ever exist, some of them would get bigger than others, how much knowledge of our time will have been forgotten? If the largest influences in our world today remain unknown and not understood by anyone outside of their influence, then how will anyone not affected by them understand why we treat them with the same regard as we do today? The same way we know magnets stick to our fridge, yet don't really care that William Gilbert experimented with iron over 400 years ago, generations of the future will hold little to no value in even the most monumental achievements of our time. That said, we can still find glimpses of ourselves in what often seems like entirely separate lives distanced by entire generations. Some aspects of how we live are tied so closely to human psychology that they transcend the very generations that started them. One notable example, which to many may be somewhat expected, is the psychological phenomenon by which each generation thinks the time they grew up was the best in history and that every generation afterward is filled with impolite youngsters who just don't understand how the world works. This is the core idea behind older crowds of individuals who publicly put down younger generations for living in ways different than their own. Just as older folk today increasingly scrutinize younger people for the way mobile devices captivate their attention, their same generation grew up hearing similar arguments regarding the use of newspapers. In addition, Countless newspaper clippings exist from these time periods, which focus on individuals who seem to have many qualities reminiscent of younger folk today. These people weren't generations ahead of their time. They simply existed in a setting we often separate from what we see ourselves in. Most societal changes take several generations to take hold, yet those same changes often seem modern and out of the blue. Relating this back to the autobiography of Guy Prime, found in the previously mentioned book, page 12 relays a conversation two individuals held sometime in the early 1900s, by which the author states, quote, its findings spelled out the end of the age of the gentleman in all the complacent jargon of the new panacea. Every generation, no matter what time they're from, see the mentality present in preceding generations as out of touch, the familiar culture of their own is proper, and any generation following them is undereducated, careless fools who act without reason or thought. These are not signs of a society in decline, rather, it's the inability of the human mind to easily recognize core developmental milestones and their subsequent appearance as determinants to the societies of their time. If you see a 40-year-old spend a late night drinking and partying with their friends, you'd have reason to assume they never grew up, or are acting reckless and immature. However, a 20-year-old acting in the same manner is shrugged off. It's a common and expected habit for them to indulge in. That's because the 20-year-old has not hit the same lifelong developmental milestones as the 40-year-old has. Not only does our body continue to change throughout our entire lives, our mentality does too. And as younger people often make mistakes finding their way in the world, older people are expected to be wiser and more knowledgeable. As the 20-year-old has their whole life ahead of them, the 40-year-old bears pressure to settle down, start a family, and be successful. The same way ancient humans in the wild had to fend for themselves and eventually separate from their parents in order to benefit the tribe, teens today naturally act out in rebellious ways to assert their independence from their families. These habits are deeply woven into our DNA and are simply natural milestones of human nature that often aren't understood by those not experiencing them. Drawing yet another parallel from the works of Guy Prime in The Embezzler, page 14 of his autobiography states, When I was young, I sought to charm. In my long middle age, I sought to impress. Now, with dotage around the corner, 
I've returned to the earlier and safer tactic. Perhaps no instances of generational patterns are more jarring than those that are seemingly direct quotes drawn from one time and played out in previous years. Mainstream subculture often scoffs at the idea of individuals who proclaim they were born in the wrong generation and feel as if they're not like their peers because of it. Surprisingly, this also has a direct parallel with the works of Guy Prime, as he recounts a conversation he had with his childhood mentor growing up. Here, he describes himself as born too late in American history for true adventure. Furthermore, you often hear individuals who conform seemingly without exemption to every mainstream habit of society being described as NPCs. This acronym, standing for non-playable character, is a direct reference to digital media and video games in the modern era. However, this direct correlation to a technology unique to our time still isn't enough to stop the core philosophy at the center of this phrase from shining through generations previously. Only in clothes did they let themselves go, page 24 states, as if from some deep consciousness that their true function was to decorate the stage of society and persuade the observer that it was real. Sometimes, this even takes the form of exact phrases that develop independent from each other, yet still have the exact same wording. Ever seen someone described as down bad when they publicly fall for a romantic interest in an openly fanatical way? Just remember, people in 1908 were using this exact phrase as well. It's not that this expression remained in the public eye for over 120 years. The phrase itself is simply so closely tied to psychological experiences felt universally among every generation that it re-emerged by sheer coincidence. In fact, I'm just going to present the quote and let you decide for yourself. The poor fellow is in such a bad way that he almost acted out of character. The truth is, no matter what time you live in, no matter what technologies are present in your life, despite the enormous amount of experiences and distances held between you and every other human that's ever existed, you are just like your ancestors. Even when you act out in attempts to set yourself apart, you are following the exact footsteps that led them to success for countless generations. You understand that a species is slow to change, and thus, there's no meaningful difference between your brain and the brain of a human 10,000 years ago. Yet, just how deep the similarities run will shock anyone and startle their worldview in one way or another. Whether it's integral psychological patterns leading to the exact same phrase being spoken uniquely hundreds of years apart, or simple milestones we hit as we develop through our entire lives, we are the same as those who came before us. We see the world through the same eyes, we make sense of it in the same way, and any mere differences are the choices we make with the time we're born into. These changes, no matter how many of them will be forgotten to time, are what make us different from everyone else. And the effects of these decisions will ring true until the very end of time itself. Hello everybody, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to go through the rest of my channel. I post videos like this on the third of every month. We have two exciting milestones we've hit on this channel. First off, we've received our first piece of fan art for this channel. Shout out to Leo Animates on Discord for this incredible piece. Secondly, we've hit 100 subscribers on this channel. Thank you so much for just three videos. I'm amazed we've made it so far so fast and just I'm, I'm so glad these videos are reaching so many people because I put so much time into them and I genuinely want them to entertain people and to just be as good as they can possibly be. So if you have any constructive criticism, feel free to leave it in the comments of any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you want to, feel free to join my Discord server in the description. It's the easiest way to get in contact with me. 
And even if you didn't like this video, all my videos are on different topics, so go ahead and stick around for any of those. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.